All right, guys, today we're going to talk about a pocket knife that is going to make you better than all your other EDC friends. You're already better than probably most people in general because you have EDC stuff. If you really want to elevate your game, this is the knife to do it. This right here is a Benchmade 940, and it is actually a terrible knife. Just kidding, it's actually pretty good, but it's definitely not the knife we're talking about today, even though it is my EDC for the day, because I have to show this 940 some love. It is actually a, a decent knife, okay? In fairness, it's not that bad, okay? But today we're actually talking about the American Blade Works ABW Model 1. Now, this is, of course, one of their newer generation Model 1s because it has the worn cliff as opposed to a more traditional, maybe more typical um, point because worn cliffs are actually not super new. But I do really dig this worn cliff. And honestly, as I carry it more, as I use it more, not only do I remind myself of how much I actually love worn cliffs because worn cliffs are pretty cool. Um, this one actually might be a little bit more of a reverse tonto, but technically still more of a worn cliff. Uh, I have a handful of other worn cliff blades in this. Uh, list or in my collection, but I really wanted to specifically talk about this one because it is really cool And I feel like American Blade Works is one of those knife companies that is totally worth picking up on if you can now Unfortunately, ABW can be or American Blade Works any of their knives Whether it's the model one or the model two can be a little bit tricky to get your hands on because these are made in reasonably small batches and of course they are all American sourced and manufactured. So when you have such tight guidelines for how you are getting things and how you're making things, it can definitely be a little bit tricky. However, one of my favorite things about ABW, as I said in my video specifically about this knife, is the fact that is the fact that these actually are very reasonably priced. When you can find these uh, Model 1s, they usually run in the mid $200 range, which in my opinion for what you're getting here is pretty good. I mean, this is easily on par with something like a ZT-05. 562, something like this guy here. You know, of course, very much flipper operations, um, very similar blade steels. This is CPM 20 CV, this is CPM Magna Cut. So, you know, we're talking pretty equal quality as far as materials and production goes. But the fact of the matter is, with an ABW, what makes it a cut above something like a ZT is that this is a production knife, but it's still a small batch production knife. So, this is more in line with like a mid tech and less in line with a full production knife. So that ZT is cranked out in the thousands, right? There's thousands of ZT0562s out in the wild. This, there might actually be thousands out there, but they're only produced in small, you know, multi hundred batches. And so this, once again, is more along the lines of what you'd call like a mid tech, something like a Chris Reeve knives. Um, Sebenza or in Kosi, where once again, there's probably thousands of Sebenzas and Kosi's Omnimzons out in the wild, but they're only produced in small batches. So that is part of what makes these ABWs very cool. In addition, like I said, another thing that makes them cool is that they really are um, very USA focused. And I think that is something that like I really appreciate about my Chris Reeves, my Hinders, my Striders. Um, even my ZTs to an extent, extent are very much American made focused. And that is another nice feature about them. Now, other things that I think really make this a cut above your typical kind of EDC knives price range is the fact that you're getting a really well-crafted product that has amazing ergos. And once again, when you look at the um, Model 1, maybe when it's closed, especially this version with the Warncliffe, it looks a little goofy, I'm not going to lie, but when you actually look at these guys and, you know, when they're open, when you hold it, when you use it, everything like the pocket clip blends seamlessly into your hand. You don't feel any hot spots. There's just a little bit of jimping on the back. Of course, your um, spacer on the back is um, lightly textured for you know some added grip but overall everything feels really good in addition to that too you can just choke up a little bit here if you really want that forward finger choil you want to get around to just get a little bit closer to that cutting edge you can totally do that now another thing that is cool about um, ABW in particular is like a lot of smaller once again kind of mid-tech budget mid-tech makers like ABW like Northern Knives like a handful of others is that they offer a lot of options 
options. Once again, this knife comes in multiple different um, blade shapes. It does, I don't believe they actually make it in another steel nowadays. I think it's just magna cut for the steel, but they do offer it in like 10,000 different handle variations. So if Ultim isn't quite your style, which I get it, Ultim isn't everyone's favorite thing, but if it isn't, then of course you get other options such as, you know, Micarta's G10s. Um, I believe they make titanium as well, if I remember correctly. I could just be thinking about TRM because TRM is also very similar where they make like tons of different G10 options and some titanium, but I do think that these guys also offer titanium handle scales, but yeah. So anyways, it's stuff like that that makes these guys just a cut above the rest. And then and of course, very similar to TRM, they do also use inset um, liners. So what that means is this is, of course, a liner lock, as you guys can see there, but those liners are inset. And actually, you can see the liners very well because Ultim, of course, is transparent or semi-transparent. So you guys can see the liners, but they are inset within the Ultim, so you don't feel... <clears throat> So you don't feel those metal uh, handles at all or those metal like inserts at all. So anyways, guys, that is the blade overall and why it is pretty dang cool. And ultimately, I think for the price range, you know, this is a very well built, very well specced out knife. And honestly, like something that's ridiculously hard to beat for the price point. I would say about the only genuine downside to these knives is the fact that they are very hard to obtain or can be hard to obtain. You can find them, but um, good luck with it. And oftentimes you do have to end up catching drops. However, I'm not entirely opposed to that because it allows ABW to keep their prices lower and still offer a really ridiculously good product and keep American knife manufacturing competitive with some of its Chinese offerings. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.